All right, everybody. Well, welcome to the introduction to Black Locust Permeable Pavers. This course is approved for one hour continuing education units in GBCI, AIA HSW, certified green professionals, AIBD, as well as may be um, valid for your state-based uh, design um, or contractor uh, builder's license. Today I'll be your host and moderator. My name is Brett Little and I'm the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. We are a 501c3 nonprofit celebrating 15 years this year and we exist to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. I do want to thank our Platinum Plus uh, sponsor, um, Anderson Windows, for all of their support in allowing us to put on these sessions as well as our gold and silver level sponsors, Cake Systems, Panasonic through their Whisper Green product, Certainty through their Air Renew, uh, VOC Eating Drywall, Warm Board, and then today's sponsor, uh, Black Locust Lumber USA. Do you support greener homes? Um, sign up as a member, help keep these sessions free, um, get access to other in-person or live events at discounts, uh, get discounts on your green building certifications, uh, as well as get a sticker and be eligible for the project of the year. All right, so with that, uh, I'm going to quick introduce our host today, uh, Tara Jaffe, with uh, project coordinator with Black Locust Lumber. Uh, Tara um, uh, is the project or represents Black Locust Lumber as the longest leading provider of Black Locust Lumber products in North America. Tara holds a Bachelor's um, of Arts from the Toluene University in Environmental Studies and a Permaculture Design Certificate. She has a background in sustainable building, agriculture, education, and conservation. Uh, very excited to have you back again, Tara, and to be working with Black Locust Lumber on promoting sustainable hardwood materials. Um, so with that, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Brett. Really, really appreciate it um, and appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Um, so I'm very excited to um, be holding this webinar again. Uh, we had a really great first go around and I'm excited um, to be presenting to all of the new participants um, in the webinar. So um, first I'm going to kind of go through um, a little bit about using black locusts and black locusts in general, um, why it is an environmental tree and an environmental uh, wood product. Um, and then I'm going to go through a little bit about wood pavers versus concrete pavers and using black locusts as um, a good option in wood paving for any kind of outdoor application. Going through the biology um, of black locusts. Um, so black locust is native to the Appalachian Mountain Range. As you can see in this photo, um, everywhere that's green is where black locust is native to. It um, goes all the way even up into New York, uh, all the way down to Georgia. So quite an expanse. That is where it is native to. Um, people do black, plant black locust as an ornamental tree, um, and it has done a little bit of escaping. Um, but generally, it is native to uh, North America. Black locusts can be found on sandy or rocky soil. Um, the wonderful thing about black locusts as a tree is it certainly grows on marginal areas um, and can be planted in soils that can be very tough for other species of trees uh, to grow on. And it does thrive in open areas, woods, and floodplains. So it's a little bit about its habitat. It also grows a little bit in Missouri um, and in the Midwest, uh, but not natively. Um, so a little bit about the biology, the physical um, aspects of the tree. Uh, the leaves, as you can kind of see in the top photo, um, they're blue-green in color. They're pinnately compound. Um, and the, leaf, the leaves themselves are, the bunches are about anywhere from 6 to 12 inches long. The bark is very dark with deep furrows. Um, and it also has a lot of spines and twigs. Um, that can be very dangerous if you're uh, handling a black locust tree um, or you're uh, brushing up against it. Um, there are a lot of really big thorns. 
Um, a little bit about the flowers of the black locust tree. They're shown here in this photo. Uh, they're a small cluster of droopy pea-like white flowers. If you know anything about um, you know, peas, pea flowers, it's the same structure in the flower. They bloom in the late spring, and they're highly fragrant. Um, they also attract bees. Um, and black locust honey is actually quite a large industry in Europe. The fruiting body of the tree are dark brown legumes, uh, pods, and they attach, they stay attached to the tree throughout the winter. Um, and so that's a little bit about um, just the physical aspects of the trees. So you could see it in the forest if you, if you were looking. Black locust um, is what I consider definitely an environmental tree. It's a leguminous species. Uh, which means it fixes nitrogen into the soil um, in a form that plants can use. Um, and similar, some other plants that share these characteristics are plants like soy, beans, um, peas. They're all leguminous species, so they are all related. And black locust is one of these species. Black locust, we like to consider it a quickly renewable tree. I believe the cutoff for the term rapidly renewable is uh, about 15 years. But black locust, can be harvested in anywhere from 25 to 30 years um, as what we consider what a saw log, which means it's greater than 10 inches in diameter. Um, oftentimes, trees that live, black locust trees that live in a forest don't live to be too old, um, maybe up to 50 years or so, but the wood itself is incredibly rot resistant for 50, at least 50 years. Um, but if you see black locust trees in more of an urban environment where uh, they don't have a lot of competition, uh, they can grow to be very old and very large. Um, black locust is also a phototropic tree, which means that it grows towards the sun. Um, and uh, so it often twists and turns and can be a very gnarly looking tree um, if you were to see it, um, but it highly, highly useful. Black locusts reproduce two ways, sexually and asexually, sexually being by uh, seed dispersal um, through the pods uh, that it generates, but also by cloning. So um, the growth patterns are similar to aspen or bamboo in that they have a whole underground root system that they share. Um, and new shoots will come out out of that root system. Uh, this also makes it a very good harvest tree because if you harvest, uh, let's say, the mother tree or one of the other um, specimens growing from the roots, you'll actually encourage the growth um, and other shoots to, to come up from the roots. Uh, a couple of things about the environment, environmental aspects of the wood. So we talked about the tree is it as itself being a living organism. Uh, now we're going to talk about the actual sawn product. Black locusts is a domestic hardwood. Like I said, it's native to the Appalachian Mountain region. Um, so it does grow here in the U.S. and is often harvested here and, and sold in the U.S. Um, so it's not coming from overseas or uh, from the from uh, the Amazon, where there's a lot of deforestation going on for tropical hardwoods that also share similar rot resistance to black locust. Um, some natural characteristics of the black locust wood, it's highly rot resistant, exceeding 50 years with no treatment in ground contact. Uh, it's rot resistance, unlike the tropical hardwoods, is actually due to its mineral um, genetic makeup instead of its oily composition. So if you've ever felt um, black locust or tropical hardwoods, black locust feels very, very dry, um, whereas ipe or teak um, will almost have, feel like it's already been finished with um, some sort of sealant. Black locust is uh, water resistant. It has a lot of antifungal and um, anti-pest um, properties. Um, and actually, it also holds a fluorescence. So if you were to ever find the time or place where you have a black light and a piece of black locust, you could turn that on and black locust will actually glow um, under black light. Pretty interesting. So those are a couple things about the environmental aspects of the wood. Um, black locust wood, because like I said, it is phototropic, doesn't often get to be to too long of length um, or large width. Um, but uh, it is still an, an excellent wood choice in terms of uh, rot resistance, durability, and not being treated with any sort of chemicals 
to keep its rot resistant. So moving on now. Now I want to talk a little bit about permeable pavers. Um, here we're showing some of our black locust pavers. Um, and on this photo on the right, is this is a photo actually I took in San Francisco, um, of some concrete pavers. So there's all kinds of different permeable pavers that are available uh, today. Sorry. Some general information about permeable pavers. All permeable pavers will allow for a walkable surface while allowing movement of storm water to percolate down to recharge groundwater. So really the whole concept of using a permeable paver is allowing water to infiltrate down to the ground systems. Um, this is because we have a lot of problems with combined sewer overflows, um, storm water runoff. This is an environmental way of attacking, um, attacking that issue while also allowing for um, people to walk on it. Some common materials that are used with permeable pavers uh, in general can be composite, uh, you know, concrete aggregate um, bricks are often used as permeable pavers. Um, some common materials to use in the joints, which are the gaps in between the pavers um, that allow for water infiltration are peat gravel, sand, dirt, moss and plant matter, uh, there's a wide variety of materials to be used in the joints depending on how quickly you want the water to infiltrate down um, from the surface. So a little bit about wood pavers. Um, the concept of using end grain wood is not, certainly not a new concept. Um, there are many historical interior and exterior applications of end grain flooring and pavers. Of course, the difference between using end grain flooring and um, uh, wood as pavers is the difference in spacing and application. Um, for um, interior end grain flooring, which is still fairly used within the industry, um, you know, you will not have uh, really any spacing, and of course this is an indoor application. So for a lot of um, end grain floor manufacturers, they can choose from a wide variety of wood species uh, because it is um, it is installed in an generally a controlled environment where it will not be exposed to the elements, um, you know, water, rain, sun, and all of that stuff. Um, and also there really requires no spacing because it is a floor um, and it will need to be, um, you know, not have spaces in between it for, for people using it. However, um, for exterior wood pavers, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, some of the same species, hardwood species, it cannot be used. Um, but in addition to that, there does need to be spacing because when wood is exposed to any sort of moisture, it will expand and contract. Wood is a living product. Um, and so any kind of pavers do require some sort of spacing so they are allowed to move. Um, some examples, there's uh, the Chrysler Corporation in 1970 had end grain flooring um, in, inside. Um, and some examples of um, exterior wood paving that was used uh, early in the 1900s and even the mid 1800s. Um, are the following locations, Chicago, um, which I actually just came from the uh, ASLA conference, so I have a lot of information about wood pavers in Chicago. Um, one of the locations is Lincoln Park, which was installed in the mid-1850s. Um, there's also the Gold Coast, which is an alley that had been closed uh, to preserve it as a landmark in Chicago. And Wood Paver Alley, which is um, not so much of a recent story, it was redone in 2012, but they had discovered uh, wood pavers installed when they had torn up asphalt, um, and they were still existing, these pavers. Um, and basically, they did a, a restoration in 2012. They used black locust uh, to replace um, what was already there. Now, in um, then we have one in Philadelphia and Carmack Street. In Pittsburgh, Rosalind Place was installed in 1910. In St. Louis, uh, black locusts, or I'm sorry, wood pavers were used on Locust Street. Um, in Cleveland, Hessler Court 
uh, was another street that had been laid with black, uh, with I'm sorry, with wood pavers, and they were actually I have a great photo on the next slide uh, by Mayor Ralph J. Perk. He was involved in the install with those. And in Nashville, uh, Demon Bruin Street in the 1900s had some wood pavers. Now. Um, these wooden pavers, generally the species that were used were softwoods, such as cedar, uh, southern yellow pine, more of old growth, of course, because this was back a hundred and some years ago. Um, now, the, the softwoods did hold a higher um, durability and rot resistance to the cedar and the southern yellow pine that we see today. However, they did um, mix these woods with coal, tar, uh, to, to extend the, life, the lifetime of the pavers. Um, and that's generally how, how they did it. Um, uh, sorry, here. Um, many of the streets were in use for about 10 years, and, and then stone and concrete became more of a regular material, so uh, wood pavers fell out, of, um, fell out of favor. But in Europe and all over Eastern Europe, a lot of cities still have wood pavers, um, and uh, use them today. Now, black locust was probably not used um, in any of the American applications because it is more of a spotty um, wo uh, wood. It grows in groves, so it's a little bit harder to find than, say, cedar or southern yellow pine. Um, and a lot of times, they, most people were using black locust as fence post material. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't so widely used, but now it's becoming more of a um, a talked about material and highly rot resistant material, which would make it a great application um, for exterior papers. Um, and this is a photo of Mayor Ralph J. Perk laying down some wood pavers at Hessler Court in Cleveland. Um, but just a little quote: Edgar Allan Poe wrote an article in 1845 about street paving in Baltimore. It is generally admitted, we believe, that as long as they last, the wood block pavements have an advantage over all others. They occasion little noise, they save a great deal of horsepower, pleasant to the hoof, and thus save the health of the horse, as well as some 20 or 30 percent in the wear and tear of vehicles, and as much more in time to all travelers through the increased rapidity of passage to and fro. So I think this is a great example about um, black locust and especially how it was used historically. The, the wood was a lot easier on the hoof, um, but also helped in the wear and tear, of course, of older vehicles. OK, moving on to the next slide. So using black locust as permeable pavers, um, and this is a, a patent pending design here um, that we hold for, for black locust pavers, um, the joints um, three-eighth inch spacing is for ADA compliance. Um, with a three-eighth inch spacing, you can get infiltration rates up to 123 inches per hour, depending on the filler, the joint filler material that you're using. The strength of black locust is um, incredibly high. Um, black locust itself has a parallel grain strength, which is what you would have on an end grain, like in the photo you're seeing here of about 10,000 PSI. Now, with the spacing, it brings it down to 8,000 and change, but that is still going to be highly comparable to any concrete paver on the market. Um, they're incredibly durable. Black locust, as I said, is 50 plus years of rot and pest resistance. Um, so the use of this hardwood um, would be much, much better than use of, of any other softwood or any um, other non-rot resistant hardwood. A little bit about water percolation with using wood pavers and black locust pavers in general. Um, so in the substrate, uh, the site needs to be surveyed by a site soil engineer to determine all the environmental conditions, which include rainfall, which would um, account for the amount of water to be infiltrated, local soil type and coarseness, appropriate bedding aggregate for subsurface, and there are various um, ASTM bedding and aggregate for even and permeable subsurface, but all of that would have to be under the determination of the engineer and not necessarily the manufacturer. Um, but the importance of looking at the environmental conditions is quite high um, because, again, we're always talking about water infiltration, and if there is more of a 
a clay soil rather than a sandy soil, the water percolation down to the groundwater is going to be much slower. In terms of joint, using a joint filler, um, engineers also would design and recommend a proper joint filler based on the site survey that they conduct for the area. Um, they sh we should be able to design to create voids to allow for water to pass through and percolate through the substrate. Um, and also, uh, the concept of compaction rates needs to be uh, assessed by the site engineer to avoid compaction sinking. And all of this information is really required for any sort of paver installation, whether it is concrete or wood or any other material. Um, all of that subsurface or in-between material does need to be um, determined by an engineer as appropriate to the space. So a little bit about the environmental benefits of using um, wood pavers as opposed to concrete pavers. And again, that is another black locust forest. Um, so using wood pavers as opposed to, um, to concrete pavers, um, and especially with black locust, um, any kind of wood paver is going to sequester carbon, um, which will make them a carbon positive product. And that's actually because um, the amount of carbon that it uses to manufacture wood is only about 10% of the carbon used, or the carbon sequestered in the actual wood itself. Uh, wood is one of the top carbon sequester materials, um, period. And uh, so using black locust or and black locust and wood as a way to sequester carbon um, is an excellent choice. And in fact, with, um, with the panels that we manufacture, which are one square foot in, um, in size, covering 366 square feet of surface would be equivalent to sequestering the average carbon emissions from gasoline consumption of one American driver. Um, 366 square feet is actually not a huge amount of space, um, which really shows you how much carbon sequestration you will get uh, with using wood. Trees and wood are highly efficient at sequestering carbon. One half the dry weight of wood is carbon. Um, carbon is, is a really hot topic um, that is being discussed um, everywhere at the moment. Um, and, and trees have really been uh, pinpointed as the best source of sequestering carbon. A little bit about uh, using wood pavers uh, for water. Um, the spaces between the pavers are going to allow for stormwater runoff, uh, which means they will reduce flooding um, in the streets, reduce the loads of combined sewer overflows, um, and also reduce water pollution, which occurs when you have um, stormwater runoff and the water um, runs along the streets, accumulating all sorts of bacteria and, um, and dirt. Whereas if water is allowed to percolate through the ground surface, it will go through its natural system of um, filtration down to the groundwater. Uh, because of this, this also allows for groundwater replenishment. If you have water being allowed to travel through the joint, um, the water will, our, ground, our groundwater systems will be replenished, which um, I actually live in California, and that is a huge problem for us. Um, also, in terms of freezing, a lot of times in the winter you'll get um, freezing and refreezing over driveways, which can get very dangerous. Um, and the use of pavers um, allows the water to percolate through, which will freeze the, the ground, but not uh, the surface of the pavers. In terms of using um, black locust as a paver product, um, black locust does not have a waxy or oily surface like other tropical hardwoods, so when it gets wet, it will retain its traction um, because it is a drier wood. So it carries very high slip resistance. A little bit about heat island effect. Uh, the definition of heat island effect is the difference in temperature between a developed and an undeveloped area. So you can see um, in this graph here, uh, the temperature over the city is much higher 
um, than that over a commercial, suburban, or a rural area. Um, and that is due to the heavy use of, of concrete and um, other building materials. Um, and, th and them reflecting and retaining heat from the sun. Uh, wood pavers actually reduce the amount of heat absorbed um, and the albedo, which is the amount of light reflected back into the atmosphere, um, is very, very low because of the color of the wood. Um, but also, wood does not retain heat the same way that stone does, um, and therefore concrete does. Um, so you will not be um, contributing to the heat island effect with any sort of wood paver installation. Um, adding plants in the joints of the pavers can further reduce the heat absorbed by the pavement, um, as any of the light will be um, captured by the plants in order to um, do their process of photosynthesis and also create, you know, not a reflective surface. Wood pavers provide, provide years worth of reduced cooling costs and CO2 emissions, which are very, very high um, from heat island effect. And black locusts can provide that for a lifetime of 50 plus years. Um, so really, in terms of heating and cooling, which is a huge problem for a lot of our cities today, um, where the CO2 emissions are, are quite high from the heating and the heat island effect that goes on, uh, wood pavers is an excellent alternative to really reducing um, that heat island effect on the surface of, uh, on the walkable surface. And just a little um, funny slide to show you all. Um, this is a picture of an egg frying on a sidewalk just to illustrate how hot it can get with concrete sidewalks and also concrete pavers. Um, I love this little cartoon, the concrete cafe. This guy's a good businessman here. Um, but you will not be able to fry an egg on a wood paver or especially a black locust paver. Um, so just a good example to illustrate the heat island effect and how wood pavers is a good alternative. So a little bit about green building standards. Um, for a lot of the green building standards, they do reward points or um, um, sections towards using pavers, um, but specifically for black locusts or for wood pavers, Living Building Challenge, which is an organization um, out of International Living Future Institute and the Cascadia Green Building Council. Um, black locusts um, would, would achieve, help achieve a materials pedal, depending on where you're sourcing the black locust. And for the paver aspect, it would help for the water pedal due to infiltration of the water. For LEED, um, which is by the USGBC, I'm sure many of you are aware of LEED, um, there are several points which you can get for um, wood pavers and black locust pavers. Um, one would be certified wood. If you can source your wood FSC, uh, then you can achieve a point for that. Regional materials, um, depending on, again, where you are located in the country, um, this could be a point that you could achieve in terms of sourcing the material close by. Uh, also for stormwater design and quality control, again, that would be due to the infiltration allowed through the pavers. For water efficient landscaping, um, and this is another point I don't feel like I really expanded upon, but the, um, the allowance of water to percolate through the pavers, especially in a landscaping application where maybe you're on a large commercial space with um, a lot of landscape elements in terms of gar um, plants or trees, allowing the water to percolate. Obviously, water moves through the soil, um, and you can reduce your water landscaping costs by a lot by allowing the water to really go down through the surface and be sucked up by roots um, by the plants that are nearby. And lastly, for heat island effect, um, reducing the heat island effect with wood pavers or black locust pavers as opposed to concrete pavers. Um, we have non-roof here, um, but actually we are providing a roof application for black locust pavers, um, a little bit lighter. Our pavers are three and a half inch cubes, um, but the non-roof would be a little bit thinner to allow for less um, 
less weight on the roof. And so you can use these pavers or wood pavers, depending on who the manufacturer is, um, on a rooftop application, allowing water to percolate uh, down through down through the through the pavers. A little bit about um, the maintenance of black locust. Um, black, lo black locust and black locust specifically is a no maintenance wood. Um, it can easily be installed off the saw. It requires no treatment um, except for end sealing, which will um, which will allow which will stop and greatly reduce any sort of end checking or splitting. But aside from that, and there are many end sealers that are vegetable based. Um, that are an environmental product. It's really a no maintenance wood. It doesn't require sealing. It doesn't require staining. Um, you can lay it in and forget about it. Um, in addition to that, the production of black locust requires very little um, as opposed to concrete pavers where uh, the concrete requires an enormous amount of carbon and water to produce. Um, the, the story is not the same for wood production. Also another reason why it's a carbon positive product and concrete pavers are not. Um, black locusts and, and most woods will develop some sort of a patina once they've been exposed to the sun. Uh, black locust develops a, a very silvery patina, as you can see to the photo on the right, um, which is one of our weathered samples here. Um, and it comes out to be quite, quite a beautiful color. Um, after about an eight months to a year and a half, depending on the exposure to the sun and the elements. In the pavers, voids will fill and accumulate small particles over time. So uh, regular sweeping of um, any sort of pavers is going to maintain the permeability and to ensure that uh, all the joints are not being completely filled up and therefore not allowing water to percolate through the surface. Um, and again, with black locusts, you have a lifetime of 50 plus years of ground contact, even with heavy traffic, um, which will, you know, keep the pavers um, as they are, but also um, making sure that they do not have to be replaced as often as the old ones did in the olden days when they were made out of softwoods and really took a beating um, from the traffic. Again, there's a difference between softwood and hardwood, which is why you don't often see um, you don't often hear too much about softwood floors. You mostly hear about hardwood floors uh, because hardwood will not wear away um, as easily as softwood will, which is what they were using historically. Um, but now we have a little bit better information, I hope, in the last 100 years to make better decisions. Um, and with new products and new um, woods coming to light in terms of their usability, uh, black locust is definitely a great choice uh, for permeable pavers um, in terms of wooden pavers. And that concludes uh, my PowerPoint here. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, I, again, I apologize about the inconvenience at the beginning, um, but I'm glad we were able to hop on it and uh, get this going. Um, Black Locust Lumber USA is the company uh, that sponsored this. Um, we are the leading provider of Black Locust architectural products uh, in the country. Um, and if you have any questions on Black Locust, on using Black Locust for any applications or specifically for permeable pavers, um, I'd be more than happy to answer questions um, after this, um, this presentation is over. But also, if you have questions in the future, feel free to reach out to us um, for any, anything that you would like to know. So I'll turn it back over to Brett now. Um, and again, thank you everybody uh, for your patience and for listening in on our Black Locust Permeable Pavers presentation. And I'm going to unshare my screen here. Um, one of the questions, uh, how wood pavers and especially black locust pavers stand up to um, snow removal Brett, operations, still... salting, uh, dicing chemicals, plowing. Can you hear me, Atara? Atara? 
So the question was, how do wood, and I know you answered some of this, but uh, how do wood pavers stand up to snow removal operations, salting, dicing, chemicals, plowing? Um, can, you, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, so some information about using um, pavers in snow and ice conditions. Salt is not going to be a concern to the damage to the wood. We actually use um, black locusts in all kinds of marine or riparian areas. Um, we've used it on boat decking and um, in piers. So salt to the wood is not necessarily a problem, but it may cause some discoloration, whitening on the surface like you would get um, with any sort of um, paved surface. Shoveling would not be a concern. Plowing. Um, would not necessarily be something we would totally recommend unless you use a rubber coated blade and you don't fully drop the blade. Um, any type of um, auger type snowblower would work fine. Um, and since the pavers have a 3 8 inch spacing, you could use an electric snow melt cable in the paver gaps if that's an option. Um, but using something like a, a skidster or, um, or one of those uh, big plow machines, um, could be a little bit concern as unless they had a rubber coated blade and the blade was not dropped fully. Again, you don't want to um, have the blade catch on an edge of the paver and uh, tear the whole thing out. But if, as long as you have that rubber blade and you don't drop it fully, there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Atar, can you see the questions coming in here? A little bit. Hold on for one second. I, okay. I'm looking down. I saw um, a question about uh, the Hessler court, and thank you, Brett, for, for throwing that one in. I have to step away. I've got something, uh, I've got an issue here, but I'm going to leave this up and running. If you can uh, just feel free to continue to answer Q&A questions. Absolutely. Um, and then if for everyone else here sticking around, we'll make sure to, to get you what you need. But feel free to um, you know continue to answer those QA. I hopefully I'll be back within the next five minutes. So thank you. Okay. Great. So um, there was one question here by Bob Krulik. What does end grain mean? Um, end grain basically means um, when normally you install like a deck or something like that, you're looking at the grain of the wood. Um, that is the long length of the wood. End grain is where you're looking at more of the tree rings. And that is end grain, um, where you see the rings in the wood as opposed to looking down on, let's say, a deck board and you're just seeing um, the grain lines. Okay. Um, I have a question from Doug Olenkite about the cost of the paver module, specifically compared to um, concrete paver unit. Um, the cost. There are a couple of manufacturers out there, um, and I'm not necessarily aware of their costs. Um, our cost um, per square foot is in the realm of $20 a square foot um, for our black locust pavers, but that is in a manufactured setting. Um, if you were to purchase the block separately, the price would probably be different. And I'm not too aware of what the cost per square foot on concrete pavers are, but I have a feeling um, it is a little bit less. Um, installation differences from previous um, concrete paver units. Again, um, I don't believe that a lot of concrete pavers come as a set. Um, they generally just come as blocks. Um, so what we have done to ease installation is to set uh, the, um, the wooden blocks on a mesh that will degrade over time uh, and then just leave the, the locust pavers as themselves. Um, and this is, allows for easier installation um, because you can set down a whole square foot at one time as opposed to putting one block down at a time. So I think it's an ease of installation um, and it also keeps them evenly spaced throughout the install process. Edge grain restraint, uh, Doug, uh, your question about edge grain restraints, um, that would be depending on how you are installing them. Um, if they're going to be next to, let's say, like a lawn um, or something where they are set in the ground, um, then having an edge restraint is not going to be required. 
necessarily as long as the sides are going to be restrained by soil um, or something of that nature. If they are going to be by um, by something a little bit less solid than soil, then you can use some sort of edge restraints. And there are many, um, you know, metal, uh, plastic, composite materials that could be used as edge restraints. However, we do not supply those. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, Jeremy Berger, how thick are the pavers? Um, our black locust pavers are three and a half inches by three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, because we are custom, we couldn't could technically make them bigger depending on the design that's being requested. Um, other manufacturers out there, I don't know necessarily um, their specifications. I know um, the older pavers did not necessarily used to be square. They used to be more rectangular, um, maybe like three or four inches wide by 12 inches wide by a couple inches thick. Um, that all depends on who's making them and what the cut is. Um, for us, it was because we were dealing with a lot of waste wood that was smaller. And instead of chopping it up for firewood, we decided it would be a much better idea to uh, chop them up and use them as pavers instead of firewood. So specifically, the dimension that works for us, and we think in terms of the um, strength, is a 3 and a half inch by 3 and a half inch by 3 and a half inch. All right, let's see if I got any other, any other questions. Yeah, feel free to drop in some more. Um, you know, I uh, I know we talked about this at the last one too, um, but it was uh, funny that video that's been going around of that uh, of that cement paver that you know they're just dumping gallons of water at it and it's just sucking it right up. Um, so, to what degree um, do these uh, wood permeable pavers? Um, and I don't know. I'm sure there's specific measurements to it. Um, sure. You know, take water versus uh, versus concrete. Is it slower, faster? Uh, you know, how does that work? Sure. So um, that all depends on the joint. Again, there's no real water going either in concrete or wood. There's no water going through the actual paver itself. Um, with wood, you will have a little bit of absorption. Um, but more likely than not, you're not going to be having like water going in one side of the paver and water coming out the other side of the paver. The, in, the infiltration is all about that joint spacing. So um, I mentioned before that the 3 8 inch spacing can allow for um, 123 inches an hour. But again, it will depend if you have a larger joint space, you may have larger infiltration rates. And it also depends on your joint filler. If you have coarser material, the infiltration may be faster. If you have um, finer material, like I would never recommend using clay in the middle, but if you have soil um, or sand, the infiltration may be a little bit slower. Um, so again, it's all going to depend on those joints. Um, we had a question here on the thickness of pavers for roof installations. Um, we would specifically, our company specifically, would provide two inch thick as opposed to uh, three and a half inches for roof installations. So, um, if, uh, if if you know, sometimes these uh, product material specifications. You know, typically people are trying to get um, uh, products within 100 miles, 500 miles, um, sure. and even in the living building challenge perspective, I know it's based on um, certain percentages of distance. But uh, what, uh, where can people, uh, you know, grab black locust pavers sort of within those uh, within those radiuses of, of manufacturing? Sure. sure. So I know we have a facility and in Pennsylvania and North Carolina, and we will be opening one up uh, in California very soon in the spring. We're looking forward to that, 2016. Um, there are a couple of other manufacturers of black locust pavers, um, and I believe Caswell is one of them, and I think they're out of Ohio. Um, I know they are close to the Chicago area. I'm not 100% sure. sure um, where they are located, um, but I believe they're in the Midwest. Um, but black locust does grow enough for it to be an industry 
um, on the East Coast in the Appalachian Mountain region from New York down to Georgia, um, and a little bit in the Midwest, especially, you know, the Wisconsin, Ohio, Chicago, uh, Indiana area. Not too much on the West Coast, enough to harvest at a consistent rate. Um, on the note of, of that as well, uh, you know, I know for the FSC uh, Forest uh, Stewardship Council, you know, typically people use that to avoid um, sourcing uh, third, uh, third world wood um, in, a, in a negative way. But uh, we all know that, uh, you know, the, the certification and management of forests is becoming more and more important, even if it's not um, necessarily um, you know, in a third world country where some of those problems persist. So, um, you know, for, for, for programs like LEED and Green Star, you get some extra credit for that. For living building, it actually has to be certified. Um, so if, are you seeing any FSC or even uh, to some degree SFI certifications popping up to source this type of um, permeable wood pavers? Um, not necessarily for the pavers themselves. Um, you know, there is black locust, FS, FSC certified black locust out of Pennsylvania, um, depending on who you're sourcing from, uh, because all the state um, state lands in Pennsylvania are FSC certified. Um, so if you're sourcing it from that location um, or from, you know, a, a, a source that's manufacturing and getting their wood from a state land forest, then you will have FSC wood. Um, but again, it all it all depends on where you source. So, and if your source, your manufacturer can have FSC certification. Specifically for wood pavers, um, you know, I, I think this is this is something, especially wood pavers, are something that was used, you know, at the turn of the century. Um, I think, especially with the amount of um, chatter about using wood in architectural applications and the carbon sequestration of wood in general, um, they are going to make quite the comeback. Um, and I think when um, when uh, they really start to get in full swing, um, we will probably start to see some sort of certification happening. But for, again, also FSC will also cover, you know, specific species of wood. So it's kind of a tri-fold or quadruple-fold issue of who is the manufacturer and do they supply FSC black loc or locust or wood in general, where that wood is coming from um, and uh, how they're manufacturing um, how they're manufacturing it and keeping it separate. But there are, there's nothing specifically now for FSC pavers. Um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, this idea that uh, um, we can use wood um, instead of concrete. It certainly uh, goes against what we normally think, um, and especially the idea that uh, you know vehicles or people are going to be moving around on this. So you know, here's another question that's sort of I think coming out of that that uh, that concern. You know, are there any studies that show ice melting road salts negatively affecting um, black locust or just wood pavers in general, since it has a high natural mineral content? Right. I think um, I think you know there is no studies currently right now on ice melting specifically with black locust papers. I don't know if the installation in Chicago where they did um, put black locust papers as a part of the historical restoration in Wood Alley, um, if they've studied the effects of ice um, and and road salt. But I will tell you, um, you know, black locusts stands up incredibly well to any sort of salty application. Like I said, it was we use it for um, yacht and boat decking. Um, traditionally, they actually made um, wooden ship pegs out of black locusts because they are so hard. So black locusts was definitely a material that was being in, used in marine environments historically because of its super high rot resistance um, and its ability to withstand marine and salt areas. I in that sense, I don't see um, I see a, a you know a high correlation between you know ice melting and, and salt water being that, but that they both carry salt and water um, and I I don't think that that would be an issue at all if if there's been historical success, success using black locusts in salty places then then there's no reason that this would have to be any different. 
Thanks, Atara. Are there any more any other questions? questions here before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, All right, well, I, I don't see anything, but uh, um, for those of you, if you do have any that uh, do pop up, um, real quick, uh, for those of you uh, listening on demand here, uh, for you to get your continuing education, uh, make sure to take the uh, quiz at the end. For those of you listening live, stick around here for another second. We've got a few more things, and you can drop in some questions while you're here. Uh, thanks again to Atara Jaffe and Black Locust Lumber USA for taking their time to uh, provide us with this information and enlightening us about um, alternative products uh, that are more sustainable. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Brett.